Well, welcome to Bible, uh, not Bible Club, but uh, prayer meeting. Get my services straight here. Uh, our devotional tonight comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We'll be looking at verses 13 to 18. And the topic that the Apostle deals with in those verses is Christ's coming. Christ's coming, something the church has been waiting for for a long, long time. And if one thing is true about the coming of Christ, it's closer today than when it was back in the time that Paul uh, wrote these words. So 1 Thessalonians 4, starting at verse 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. The common belief that is overtaking our culture is that there is no life after death. People seem to want to believe that as opposed to believe that there is life after death. They just say that, well, when we die, we just cease to exist. Well, there is sadness in such a belief. The sadness is not so much the absence of an afterlife, but the sadness is that this life then has no meaning. If there is no afterlife, what's the meaning of this life? What you do in this life uh, has absolutely no meaning whatsoever. Uh, if you are self-sacrificing and doing good, it's all for nothing because you just die and go away. And if you're a bad person or you know you steal and you selfish and you just do all kinds of things like that, doesn't make any difference because, hey, when you're dead, you're gone, it's, it's over with. That's really sad to think that this life has no meaning. When people really believe that, that's when they take their own lives. Life has no meaning. I think deep down inside, most people, even though they'd say they don't believe it, really believe that there is life after this life. Now, we Christians have a hope. Actually, we have more than a hope because we know. We know Jesus died and rose again, and we believe that he is our prototype. In other words, we will actually die, and then we will rise again. So we also have the comfort that Christ will return, and with his return, we will see loved ones who have died in the faith. That's something that I'm looking forward to. There's some people that I would just love to meet who aren't here anymore. Verse 15, he says, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. Paul says this is the assurance that we have from God's word. God has revealed this, and we know it's for certain. Right now, the righteous dead are waiting the resurrection. While the New Testament calls this sleep, we have some hint that perhaps they are actually aware of their own surroundings, and they are actually anticipating the resurrection. You know, we talk about, you know, they have gone to sleep. The New Testament says that, you know, the death of the saints is like sleep. But you know, when Jesus talked about Lazarus and the rich man, even though that was a parable, it was based on something. And it gives us an idea that over on the other side right now, that people are aware of their surroundings. They uh, can communicate in some way. Now, I don't want to go too deep into that, because uh, you know we have a limited idea. But it's not like they're just totally unconscious and the world doesn't exist for them or you know, nothing exists for them. 
I think they are aware of what's going on. So, but whatever it is like that, we know this for sure. When Jesus comes, they will come with him. The Bible says so. Verses 16 and 17. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Here in these two verses, the Apostle Paul gives us a preview of Christ's return. What a day that will be. I think there's a song by that name in those words. Christ will come with the shout, with the voice of an archangel, the sound of a trumpet. How many have ever heard of a shout? Anybody ever heard a shout? Okay. How many have ever heard of an archangel? Ever hear an archangel? I, I don't know what an archangel sound is. An angel that goes around saying "ark, ark, ark, ark." Uh, that actually means a high angel. Okay. I don't know what an archangel sounds like. How many knows what a trumpet sounds like? Okay. I know what a trumpet sounds like. How many know what a trombone sounds like? All right. Okay. How many know what a xylophone sounds like? And sometimes all too much at one time, right? <laughs> the point that Paul makes with all this noise, everyone will notice when Christ returns. And no one will be left wondering what has happened. In the resurrection, Paul says, the dead will rise first. That makes sense because they will return with Christ. And as soon as that happens, the living will be caught up together with them. That's going to be exciting. You know, if we are here, and it could happen any time, you know, just this noise from heaven, and then all of a sudden, you know, we are caught up, and then we get to meet the Lord. That's going to be quite a day, isn't it? And not only will we meet the Lord, but the apostle says we will be with him forever. I tell you, you know, as I listen to the news from day to day, I think, Lord, you know, I just, this world just ain't what it used to be. Right, Sister Glennon? And I'm kind of looking forward to heaven. I don't know how much longer this world can go on. It'll go on as long as God says go on. But one day God's going to say, okay, it's enough. And all this is going to happen. And I don't know where I will be at that time, but I know when it happens, I'll be involved. Either I will be resurrected or I'll be caught up and we're all going to meet the Lord. And then finally, verse 18. Paul says, therefore in the light of what we've just talked about, comfort one another with these words. The very thought of the resurrection is comfort to the redeemed. It's something for us to look forward to. Uh, I've noticed that the longer I live on earth, the more the old body has an ache and a pain and a hurt and you know, this part doesn't work anymore, and this one doesn't feel like it's supposed to anymore, and uh, just things like that. Well, the thought of the resurrection is a real comfort because, guess what? No aches and pains. Everything will work. Fingers will all work. The toes will all work. Won't have toothaches. Won't have headaches. Won't that be wonderful? I tell you that, I'm looking forward to that. So the thought of the resurrection doesn't frighten me at all. It's really quite a comfort. And all of us miss someone that has passed away and is now in the presence of Christ waiting the resurrection. That name just came to your mind, didn't it? That face came to your mental picture. Someone that you love dearly gone to be with the Lord. And 
while you miss them, you really aren't sad because just in a little while we're going to be reunited with them. And just think, there are people that we only know because we read about them in the Bible or we read about them in a book. We heard a preacher or teacher mention their names and their story in some kind of a lesson. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to meet Moses. And one day I'll get to meet Moses. Certainly would love to, to meet the Apostle Paul. And one of these days, he and I are going to, to meet. I'm sure there are a lot of people going to want to meet Paul. But you know the one I'm looking forward to most to meeting? Jesus, my Savior. I tell you what, I, you know, I've, I've got a mental picture of what Jesus looks like. But I tell you what, if that picture's wrong, the moment I see him, I will recognize him. And, you know, he's going to recognize me. He's going to recognize you as well. So that's a comforting thought to think about the resurrection. And it is inevitable that one day in the future, each of us here today will lose a loved one in death. And for us that are left behind, we'll take comfort in the truth and the reality of the resurrection. You know, that funeral day is a sad day. Our hearts are broken. Just can't think of life without that dear loved one. But we take comfort in the truth and the reality of the resurrection. This is just a temporary separation. We say goodbye to a body here, but we know that in just a little while, we will get to see that dear loved one again. So we will be reunited with them, and we will get to meet the saints of God from the generations past. Paul says to comfort one another, and in thinking about that, let us also invite those that do not know the Lord in salvation to come and make ready for this great day. Wouldn't it be nice if everyone in Lawton, Oklahoma was ready to meet the Lord? The day is coming. And if we are ready, let's do our best to reach out and help others be ready for the coming of the Lord as well. Christ's coming is soon. Amen.